Patterson cuts back. Patterson spinning toward the goal line. Touchdown. Welcome in to the play of the fight song, Iowa fan perspective here. We are recapping this time a win over Rutgers, Iowa. The final wins 22 to 0. First shot out of the year. Anytime you get to say that, that's awesome, especially with the struggles we've seen from the offense. It's it was awesome to be in Kinnick. This is the first time I got a chance to be there uh this past weekend. Got there early, had a fun tailgate, saw a lot of people having a good time. Um, always a good time to be able to get out to Iowa City for one of these. And it's even better when you leave with a win and even better when you're not stressing out in the fourth quarter because we can't move the football in the defenses, um, giving it maybe a bigger play than we would have liked. But it was a great time. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, That's the one time I'm like pretty happy with uh, it getting dark pretty fast is when you get into the second half and it's dark and nighttime in Kinnick. It's it's a blast. Uh, it just adds to the atmosphere, and I think we all kind of are on the same page in that aspect of um, when we look at the Hawks and we look at uh, that team, I think they feed off the atmosphere, and it really helped out. You saw it with a couple of false starts uh, on the same possession for Rutgers early in that game, and then you saw it late in the game as well. Uh, it just got louder and louder, and I think they probably had six or seven false start penalties on the day. I would not penalize at all, actually, on this Saturday, which was awesome. Again, defensive shutout, that's awesome. How about Deacon Hill, though? Um, let's talk about the numbers on him a little bit. 20 of 31 for 223, a touchdown and an interception. His best game to date, one of the best Iowa quarterback games we've seen in a little bit, um, which isn't saying a ton, but it is saying that there was improvement there, and it's not a bad Rutgers defense that did it against. Obviously, they didn't expect him to throw the ball 40 times a game. 31 still a good amount. They ran it 46 times, so it wasn't like Iowa gave up the run. Uh, but I think they saw an opportunity to hit shorter passes, sit in the flat, or take chances downfield, um, whether that was a Seth Anderson on a couple. Caleb Brown had a couple great grabs and a couple throws to Jazz. He dropped one, um, but the running backs also had a good day through the air uh, on the receiving end. Leading, ro- leading rusher for the Hawks is LaShawn. LaShawn Williams goes 13 carries for 63 yards, 4.8 average. Everybody else was right around that number, maybe a little less. Caleb Johnson. I believe it was second in yards and Jazz third. Um, but the running game was good, man. At 46 carries, I ran 46 times. I think that shows you exactly what they wanted to do, exactly how they were feeling the game plan was going to be. Even if Rutgers had a good run defense, I think they wanted to go right at it no matter what. Didn't quite get over that 200-yard mark that you probably would want to see when you run it 46 times. Um, they got to 179 at 3.9 average. Again, not great, not bad. We'll take it every time, though, when uh, it turns out in the result it did. Let's kind of go over a couple things offensively. Um, I thought in the first half there were opportunities, uh, especially when we're driving the football down the field. We miss a field goal uh, on one of the first drives, find ourselves in a good spot, keep kind of working field position. At one point, Rutgers had the opportunity to get within Iowa, uh, Iowa's side of the field and just keep pushing the issue, and it didn't feel like they ever got over that hump. They'd get to that point, and they'd have a couple false starts or – a sack or just something would set them back and they just decide to punt and i would kind of let into that and i think that's why the low scoring first half is what it is because i was losing the field advantage or the uh field position battle at that point in time right uh it was a lot of backed up drives it was a lot of couple first downs punt uh ruckers would get back into territory and then they it just kind of went back and forth that's why it was three zero now it should have been more than three zero at half if you recall we walked down the field digging hill through i i just don't that wasn't my favorite the play call fine. I think he just looked at the wrong spot. He was immediately looking over to the sideline on the far side of the field off the far hash. And we saw him later in the day, make that throw and even deeper downfield. I mean, this was a five, six yard hitch that he could not get any muscle behind and just like fluttered out of his hand and was picked off. There wasn't really the read. That was the only one he was looking at uh, through that ball did not throw it on a line and it ended up getting picked off. And Iowa could have ended up with six or even three there. Three guaranteed, you would think, um, but I think a touchdown on that drive was 100% possible, especially if they were letting it run uh, or flinging around the field like they were all day. So uh, I would like to see that, a better throw or a different read made. Uh, we we're staring down the receiver, and it's just an easy pick for the run, or the corner. We're lucky that wasn't pick six. I mean, if you go back and look at that, he just kind of bobbled a little bit. If he catches that clean, I mean, nobody touches him. Absolutely gone. So uh, shout, out, shout out to the shutout on that one. Definitely. Helped out the Hawks there. Um, let's go to the defensive side real quick. Jay Higgins and Nick Jackson were great again. Uh, eight tackles for 
J and seven for Nick, respectively. Again, ran the defense uh, and let him on in tackles. Iowa had three sacks, I believe, on the day, um, but a lot of them came late. And it, I, we kind of knew that Rutgers offense, if they couldn't run the football, that things were going to get bad. Wimsout's not a great quarterback. He only had the one interception on the day that was about returned um, by Schulte back to the house. And he got down to the five or six yard line, turned into an iron touchdown. Very happy with that situation. But I think we knew if we could stop and stifle the run, I think I was going to have success. And they did exactly that. Right. So a ton of fun to watch that. And just a lot of blitz packages. Uh, Phil decided to bring pressure consistently. And it turned out really well for the Hawks as they kept Rutgers to a very low total yardage number. Let's look at a couple of things. Um, when you look at just what was different, right? Like what was different between this week, the week before against Northwestern, the week before um, in other games, the run game was better. Like we talked about a 3.9 average. We want to get that a little higher up, but they were able to move the football forward. Um, Caleb Johnson back in action, had some good carries late in that game. He kind of became the late ho- or the workhorse in that fourth quarter. Uh, and I think he did exactly what he was asked to do in that situation. Zero sacks, that offensive line gave up. I would give up zero sacks to Rutgers. That's awesome. The one time they did get one, there was a holding penalty on the defense uh, in the secondary, and it just negated that one sack that they ended up having. So zero sacks for the offensive line. They've been pretty good, honestly, like most of the year in pass protection outside of the Minnesota game uh, in some other spots as well. But usually they've been solid in pass coverage, and anytime you get zero sacks, you'll take that, right? 50% on third downs and two of two on fourth down were the Hawks. I think that's also really good. It's great improvement. Um, we want to be a little bit over that 50% on third down, but two of two on fourth down is awesome. I know they were both quarterback sneaks from a yard or less, right? But we'll take them every time we get a chance to get them, right? And we're super happy with that. Also, I was happy now going back to that interception Deacon threw right before the end of the half, uh, the first half that is. He made good reads. Like he was going through progressions. He had the ability to kind of look through things. It wasn't just look at one receiver, get rid of it. If it's open, it's you know, throw it and it may be a good ball. If it wasn't, you know, check out if it wasn't. It was pretty easy for him to uh, find different spots and really attack that defense. Whether well, that was in the sideline, a couple shots over the middle of the field, and it really worked out well. And he looked good and he looked comfortable, right? It's a lot uh, that a conf- confidence can do for a quarterback, especially when he's new to a system, new to a program. And I think he needed that exactly. So super happy with that out of them. Uh, a couple of things that I loved right here. I'm just going down a list. Offensive line play, I thought it was really good. It's hopefully just gets better and better. Illinois got a really good front that we're going to have to deal with this week. Um, consistent pressure on defense. I love the fact that we were bringing blitz packages. Uh, it feels like more than normal we were uh, just on the rewatch, and it turned out great, and it worked the way we wanted it to. And then a confident quarterback. Those are three things I loved about Iowa's performance on Saturday. To work on and improve. A couple things here. I think Jamari Harris uh, has been good. But I think he's also been kind of the issue. You could tell he was getting picked on. Uh, Rutgers didn't have the guys to really make him uh, feel that. But Juice Williams um, coming up for Illinois is that guy, and he can make problems. And so I think Jamari just a couple of things here and there. He just doesn't look completely back. Um, They were picking on him the whole time, and I expect Illinois to do the exact same thing. Three points in the first half. Again, we lost field position battle. It felt like we were always on our heels in our own end. I just get off to a better spot, right? Like it's got to be a little bit better than three and a half. I know we put up 19 late, but a lot of that was due to just how the game ended up out playing, right? Like Rutgers kind of looked like they had no choice, but to start flinging it around the yard. Um, and it did not work out for them. As you saw, they just didn't look great. And Iowa took advantage of everything that they were doing. So um, if we can get to a spot where we're not just scoring three in the first half and having to rely on a second half of just a team faltering, I think that would be really good for us. Now, um, going into the weekend, a win, and you're into the Big Ten title game. You win the West with a win this weekend at home against Illinois. No, I'm not wearing orange for that reason. Then replaced tonight on Monday Night Football. That's why I got the orange on. But um, it's a, it's an opportunity, man, and we'll get into the preview later in the week. And along with the episode that comes out Thursday, it's going to be a ton of fun. You would love to see a Rocky Kinnick Stadium for a 2.30 kick. It'll be not or dark by second half. I a ruckus, excited Iowa City Kinnick crowd would be just incredible. Uh, and I think the team deserves it. Let's just go win the West, right? This is our goal at the beginning of the year. Go win the West, 
and then we'll worry about Nebraska next week. Let's get through Illinois right now. I think that's the big one. You need one of these next two. Let's just do it now. Let's do it at home. Let's do it on senior day. Let's have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Again, follow us all over our socials. Check into our Thursday episodes. Thank you again, and go Hawks.